bishop. I called him. I, I didn't call this bishop. I called Bishop Bruton. I called him too. But I said, man, I said, why you got to go first, man? You messed me up, man. Got some paint chips on the floor I got to pick up now, man. He preached the, that joker preached the paint off the wall, and then you got to go, oh, now you got you. You know, like, oh, what are you going to do? I'm like, crying out loud, really? You got no choice, man. The guy plowed the field, and now you come in here like, you ain't that good, you know, so I got work to do. So I prayed on the ride. I did. I ain't going to lie. I'm like, Jesus, you better help me. <laughs> he, you're, he got a joker could preach. I don't know. He could preach, man. One time I went to a meeting. I ever tell you that meeting I went to? We went to go preach for him. And uh, he said, you want to come to me with this? We, we did meetings together. But he goes, you want to come to me to this meeting I'm going to? I got to preach a meeting. I said, yeah, I'll go. You know, I sat in the front. Joker start stand up for the reading of the word. I'm like, all right, this would be good. Let's chill out. Yeah, come on, buddy. And he started preaching at an axe about the shipwreck. Oh, yeah, where are you going to get a text out of this? He's like, and the boat broke, and there was pieces everywhere. And I'm going, dude, what in the world is he going to do with this sermon? This cat gets up, and in front of everything, no, he gets up, he goes, Today I want to talk to you about making it on broken pieces. I said, Jesus, good God. Did Joker get a shipwreck and got a sermon out of T.D. Jakes Jr. over here? Got a sermon out of broken wood chips. I said, I ain't. That's when I knew. Let him go after. You go first. Put him in the end. Because if you could preach about broken wood chips, you got something I ain't got. So, hallelujah. I was like, praise the Lord. So, we're going to get in this thing, amen? Well, Bishop, I'm going to take the offering, amen? I want you to increase. Listen to 2 Kings chapter 7. I'm going to go here today. I really believe the next two days, I know I got something for you, but you got to connect to it, and uh, it's going to take faith to grab it. I'm going to come back here in a minute. It says this in verse 7. I, I, believe, that, uh, I believe that the anointing is connected to whatever you say in the house of God. Okay, now this you could come in here and go, well, this guy's trying to stretch me beyond, but I'm not. I'm trying to trying to always get you into another dimension because I really believe God wants you there. And a bishop said, you know, will you take the offering? I always will. I want to serve. You know, you're a servant of the Lord. You know, you want to do it. But this is about you. Giving is not about God as much as it's about you. You understand know, what I mean? And sometimes people get nervous and they're like, oh my God, I don't know what's going on. God wants to increase you supernaturally. I know you come in here, you're like. What are you going to say? What I'm going to tell you is this, is that if you can mix your faith with the word, your faith will produce in your life whatever it is you need. Because sometimes we don't, we don't know what dimension of giving we're in. God, God will stretch you in areas. God will, I believe this. God will stretch you in meetings to bring you to another dimension of, of what you have capacity to receive. Because it's all about obedience. It's not really about money. To somebody, 20 bucks is a lot of money right now. To somebody, 20 grand ain't a problem. To somebody 20, it's serious. I've been, you know, you've been around, you know, you've been around. You see people, man, they're like, you know, I've seen guys raise a crazy amount of money because to other, wherever you're at, that's where you find your faith. You know, somebody right here, maybe like, five bucks, that's a stretch. Well, don't, don't worry about it. Start where you're at. But the thing is not about, it's about the heart attitude because you're a steward of what God gives you. Okay? You steward it. It ain't really yours. If you think it's yours, try to take it with you when you go to be to heaven. You can't. You can stick it in the box with you. You ain't taking it. it ain't you. Trust me, you're leaving it in the earth. Amen? So you're stewarding what God gave you, and the only thing you need to do is have obedience and hear from heaven. I want to tell you something right here. I believe this. I want you to read this. is a weird text. If you got it, it'll be great. It's 2 Kings chapter 7, verse 1. And Elijah, there was a famine in the land, and they were in need. And Elijah said, hear ye the word of the Lord. Everybody underline that. Because this is about giving. You've got to hear the word of the Lord. You've got to hear what God tells you to do. I believe this. That my tithe is not going to get me to my mission. You understand what I mean by that? My tithe ain't, my tithe ain't going to get my ministry figured out. I got to go beyond that. You know what I mean? Now, some of you, listen, if you're first timers or this is new to you, do what you want. Don't feel any demand or any pressure, any what it's about. But it's about sometimes in life you start understanding that I've got enough, but I got to get more to get to where God's got me in my destiny. Is that okay? Is that all right? And you've got to connect to it. So I want you to hear, hear the word of the Lord. So the key today is you need to hear what God's telling you to do. That's every time because that's key. Thus says the Lord, what? Hear, hear, I love this. Hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord, tomorrow about this time, a, 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 firm, a, a, a measure of flour shall be sold for a shekel and two sheaves of barley for a shekel at the gate of Samaria. What's he saying? He said the famine's over. 
Come on. Look at your neighbor and say the famine's over. Now, look, right here, that's enough to get you what you need. See, because people don't understand. They say, are you just talking? Well, that, that's up to you to determine whether I'm just talking. Because to some of you, I'm just talking. To somebody, I just opened up a portal to get to another dimension. I believe like this still because I believe right now whatever you say, God will back up and all you need is faith. That's the key. If it's going to work, it's going to be based on you. But I'm telling you what I'm seeing out of the text. It says, as he said, tomorrow. Now watch verse 2. I love verse 2. We're going to come back to this later maybe. So the officer of whose hand the king leaned on answered and said, said listen, I love this, right? So here's this dude. The guy drops the word, right? Elijah drops the word, right? And this bystander comes and says this. Who's what? Whose hand the king leaned answered to the man of God and said, hey, look, if the Lord would make windows in heaven, could this even happen? He's doubting the word. He said, he basically said, look, dude, if God put windows in heaven, this couldn't come to pass. You always got one of them in the crowd, right? Like, yeah, okay. You got a friend like that, right? You got a dream. You got a vision. Yeah, right. You're going to do it. Look what he says. In fact, look, he said, and he said, in fact, you shall see it with your eyes. But you shall not eat of it. What's he saying? You're going to see it, but you can't be a partaker of it because you're doubting the ability of what I just said. Come on, somebody. So what am I telling you today? Does God want to increase you? You better believe it. Does God want to bring you to another dimension? Yes, he does. But here's the thing. Are you going to sit by and by stand and go, hey, you know what? I don't want to. I'm not. Look, God's got to open. Look, to get me out of the mess I'm in, God's going to have to open up a window in heaven. To get me into another dimension of what I need financially, God's got to open up a window of heaven. You're going to get a critic that's going to say, can God open a window in heaven? But he said what? And if you read the whole story, you find out what? By the next day, the increase hits the land. Now, the question is, why do I use this? Because I'm using this today to show you something. That what did the Lord tell you? Because whatever God told you, see, wherever there's vision, there's always provision. But I got news for you. Without vision, come on, what? Provision sometimes doesn't look like it's working the way it's supposed to work. You got to put yourself in another dimension of obedience to say, God, what do you want me to do? Listen to me. I believe in special times. Now, I really do. I believe there's special times of sowing in meetings and stuff you do. Come on. You know what God does? He brings increase into your life in a dimension you couldn't get to. Look, I've been in meetings around guys. They got a kind of anointing on their life that something will come on your life. Amen. You understand? You're in this house. Something comes on your life. You're in the blessing. Something. Comes. What is it? Obey the Lord. Obey the Lord. Of the Lord. What's the Lord saying? That's all we want is obedience. I don't care if the offering's going to China or the offering's going to India or the offering's going to the church, wherever the offering's going. You got to have obedience because obedience is the key to open up windows in your life. Come on, somebody. Now, see, because some of you, see, watch, right, I can catch it, because some of you, while you're in here, see, God will download something in you and say, so and do and do and act. And when you act, guess what it does? It moves in faith. Come on, right? It's all about obedience. You catch something like, whoa, I got to move in faith. When I move in faith, what do I do? But here's the thing. Sometimes in life, it looks so big. Come on. How am I going to get out? God have to open up a window and everything. So you got to understand what the prophet of God was saying. He said, there's a famine in the land. This ain't changing. He said, I promise you by tomorrow because of my word. It's going to change. But just because you got a word, you still got to have faith to activate it. He said, you're going to see it, but you can't partake of it. Why? Because you doubted it and disbelieved it. But guess what? The next day, increase came. So what's it about? Can you hear what the Lord's telling you to do? That's what giving's always been about. Can you obey the command of the Lord? Because if you can obey what God tells you to do, guess what God will do? He'll increase you to a place you ain't never been before. Come on. He'll do in your life what you couldn't do on your own. Amen? Some of you I know are still spectating a little bit. Like, I don't know. Look, I'm telling you today, if you'll activate what you believe, God will bring increase in your life. Come on. He'll bring increase you can't even contain. He'll have it coming from every direction of life. Come on. You can't outgive God. That's a God's honest truth. You know, that's cute when you, when you got no money. You know what I mean? When you ain't got no money, everybody say, well, you can't outgive God. But then when you get some money and you start giving more, guess what you find out? You can't outgive God. Guess when you got a little bit, you can't outgive God. When you got a lot, you can't outgive God. God can contain it. Guess what? He wants to bring the blessing in your life. But the thing is this, can you mix your faith with the obedience? Come on. That's the key. So what's my job? Do whatever he tells you to do. Whatever he tells you to do is key. So when you're in meetings like this, I believe there's a special anointing to bring you another dimension in your finances. Well, why would it not be? Is there anointing to set you free if you were bound today? Yes. Is there anointing to heal your body? Yes. People don't want to talk about this in church. They don't, oh, just go, you know, go do it like this. No, nah, don't you do it like that. You got to learn about it because when you learn about it, you increase. You got a dream in you. You got a plan in you. You got a purpose in you. Come on, right? 
You got, if I, all right, watch. Oh, praise God. It ain't about money. What would you do Monday morning if you had all the money you needed? You'd be starting at ministries and doing those things and being the missionary God called you to do, whatever it is. You'd be building a water well somewhere. Somebody'd be feeding some starving kids somewhere around the world. Come on, man. Don't tell me. Build it, build it out back. Do it, right? Come on, right? So look, everybody needs to look. I used to think, you know what's funny? I said, God, I can believe. You remember when you were cute and you were little in this thing, and you're like, God, I can believe you for money? Oh, I'm good at believing God for money. You know what I mean? When you needed like $100. Come on, somebody. How many of you were good at believing God for money? Don't lose me now. How many of you were good at believing God for money? 20 bucks, Right? You're getting a building project. How much I need? $4 million. What do you say? That's just to get the thing erected. That ain't even get the thing done. What do what, what you say? Four, 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 four million? What we got in the budget? Praise the Lord. You go to the finance department, got $100,000. Praise God, we need a miracle. <laughs> how, how you doing all money now, bro? Yeah, come on. Somebody help me out there. Tell the truth, right? Yeah, I got enough to buy a Coke. Praise the Lord, right? Coke and a lunch. Come on, right? Somebody come to you and say, hey, pay my rent and pay my bill. Come on, right? Look. It's, it works in increments. Once you get good at the hundreds, God will teach you about the thousands. Once you learn about thousands, he'll teach you about tens of thousands. You get good with the tens of thousands, he'll teach you about a hundred grand. I got, I got a buddy, right? I just, how many of you, you, you don't watch this guy down here, I don't think as much. You ever watch Keith Moore? You ever watch that guy on TV? Keith Moore, you don't get him down here a lot. He was one of my instructors at Rhema. He used to, instruct, used to carry around Brother Hagin's Bible. He used to tell a story. He said, I, he said, this is what I lived on, pinto beans, cornbread, and a double ride with a green shag carpet. I said, what did he say? He said, pinto beans, cornbread, hot sauce. Come on, somebody. Go on, speaking somebody's language in here. You feel it? That's all right, right? And a double wide with green shag rug. How many of you know that green shag rug? You had some of that at the house? Tell the truth. You know you did. We at the first church had green shag under the thing. We pulled it up. It was green, and it was orange, puke orange underneath that. I swear to God, I don't know where that, that came from, the devil or somewhere. We had this up, right? And he'd come in there, man, and I'd be like, look at this joker. And he kept sowing and keep doing and kept doing and kept sowing. He was teaching prosperity. And I started noticing. I said, look at this guy, man. He's not just teaching it. He's living it. And it got better and better and better and better. And you'll see him on Believer's Voice of Victory, you know, Brother Copeland and all that stuff. He's on there. And he's, he was my instructor. I carried his Bible one time. He didn't know where he was going. I said, come on, Brother Moore, I'll take you. And he was doing And I watched this guy right before my eyes. And then all of a sudden, you know what? I had another buddy of mine. I said, you know what he just did? I said, no, what did he do? He said, he just gave away a million dollars. I said, what would you say? He said, yeah, he just gave away a million-dollar offering to one of this guy, Pastor Nunzio in P Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. He said he stroked him a check for a million dollars for the building project. I said, that's a long way from a green shag carpet and a double-wide pinto beans and cornbread. How about you? Amen? But guess what? It works. It works from podunk, poor Mississippi where he grew up. I'm being straight. Listen, you got to start somewhere. But the thing will work if you work it. It will happen if you allow it. It will do it if you'll do it. God's not a God that he should lie. He's going to come through. But the thing is, where can you connect with your faith to see him come through for you? Because last time I checked, if you plant a garden, guess who gets the harvest? You do. It ain't about giving it away. It's about planning in your future. And whatever goes in your future can show up in your next season. You might not see it this season, but you could see it next season. But the key is this. You're going to look at me and say, preacher, I don't believe you. I know you're going to watch it from afar. You're going to be like that guy that leaned on the server and said, you're going to see it, but you ain't going to partake it. But somebody in here says, you know what? I'm going to get in on it. And I'm going to do what God tells me to do and be obedient. And guess what you do? Tomorrow, something will break. A week from now, something will break. A month from now, something's got to change. Why? Because God's a God that he shall not lie. Whatever he said, he's going to do. And if he said you give, it'll be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over shall men give unto your bosom. Guess what? He said you got the power to get wealth. Wealth ain't anywhere else but in your hand. And your seed is the smallest as long as it's in your hand. But once you let it go out of your hand, poo, it goes in God's hand. And that's when it can produce something in your life. You ain't listening to me. Nobody wants to listen to me when it comes to money because everybody thinks you're trying to take their money. That's because we don't think right. We got to understand the principle is what? Increase. Why? Because you need more in the storehouse to do. Because guess what? Your vision ain't going to make it on 10%. I'm telling you right now, ain't going to happen. Ain't going to manifest. You wait all your life. Try to do the math. Figure it out. You got to understand that there's opportunity to increase and God will direct you when and where and how.
That's up to you. So when you do now, you just be obedient. So close your eyes and take your seat. Figure out what you're going to do. I believe it. Then we're going to preach a word, help you, helping me. You're helping me while I'm helping you. Amen. I like it. I believe it. Amen. You got your seat in your hand? Say this out loud. I believe this. I, 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 I'm, still a, I'm still the kind of guy that prays about it. You know what I mean? Pray about it. Ask the Lord, what do you want me to do? I'll be serious about why. I don't want to miss. You know, one time I was sitting in a meeting like this, and uh, I was sitting there. I would pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I just thank you right now. Obedience is the key. I don't know what they're believing God for, but I know you You know, and I know you're going to bring increase in each and everybody's life. And, Lord, I just thank you, Lord, for what you're doing in this house. I thank you, Lord, for the building. I thank you for the project. <laughs> I thank you for everything they're doing, Jesus. I thank you, Lord, you got plenty in store. You know, the Lord told me something the other day. I said, I'm going to just say this out loud. He said, I got plenty of people in my kingdom that could pay your bills. That's the God's honest truth right there. You think you got to build it? He never told you to build it. He told you to believe me for it. He didn't tell you to start no ministry. He said, believe me for it. God ain't never told you to pay for nothing. God said, you believe me for it. I'll make sure it comes to pass. Amen. You just believe God and he'll do what he said he can do. Amen. You trust the Lord with all your heart. Amen. Just say this with me out loud. Say, Lord, thank you for the opportunity to give. I take it as a privilege. I activate my faith. Thank you for transforming my life. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. The ushers, or you go get it. You do it here. Praise God. Oh, we do it. But here's my thing. You know, I was in a meeting like this one time. I was sitting in a meeting. You know, God was preaching about giving. I'll teach while you're doing this. I'm serious. This stuff works. I put some money in an envelope. You know, and I, and I felt like, man, and God really tugged my heart. He said, man, it wasn't big. You know, like another 15 bucks or something like that. You know, you ever have to rip your envelope and put the little extra in the little corner? You ever been there? You ever do that? Like you got to rip your envelope and shove a little more in the corner? You ever do that? I'm sitting in a meeting, right? I'm sitting in a meeting. I'm in Louisiana. I'm in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. I'm on the other side of nowhere, right? I was in the swamp, man. We rode over the swamp. And I'm sitting in a meeting, and God said, do it. I said, I don't even know what it was. Another 50 bucks, something silly. God said, do it. I said, I ain't doing it. I feel stupid. Going to rip up the thing. How am I going to do this? He said, no, you better do it. I said, all right. He was tugging at my heart. So I ripped the little thing. I shoved the little 50 in there. I tried to lick it right. It didn't look right. It looked stupid. I crinkled it up. I threw it in the thing. I didn't even know what I was going to need. I was going on a trip, right? They said, oh, you know, you got to have this, have that. I didn't have none of the money. I said, the buddy of mine said, hey, he said, you go and I'll, I'll pay your way. You pay me back when you get home. I said, okay. Got home. Did that. Shut the thing. Put it in the thing. Forgot all about it. Went on the trip, came back, $1,500. I put $150 bucks in the offering, and it was like $1,500, $1,800. I got him back. I didn't say nothing. I said, I'm going to get you that money. He said, you don't need to get me that money. He said, I'm going to pay your ticket. I said, you going to pay what ticket? I said, don't pay the ticket. I said, I told you I'll pay for it. It ain't about that. I said, I'm just going to get back. He said, no. He said, no, no, no. He said, I, 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 the Lord told me to pay you. Pay you. Ticket way. Pay your way. You ain't got to pay me a dime. It's, it's a seed. Go. You know, I walked away. God said, hey, remember that money I told you to sell? I said, yeah, I forgot about that. He said, I didn't. That's that money. See, you don't know what you're unlocking in your life by being obedient. You really don't. Amen? So don't ever miss some opportunity. It could be 50 bucks. Change your life. You don't think so? Yeah, it's crazy, man. You go to lunch, do something, make a move. I'm in the building right now because of phone calls and goofy stuff. You don't know. You better do it, though. You better do it. You better be obedient. Okay, so now here's the deal. I got you got to figure this out. I'm gonna get this thing out. If I don't get it out, it's your fault, not mine. I got it in me. All right. So don't sit back and wait, cause I've been really sitting on this thing, and um, I don't know all of it we're gonna do. We just let's pray for a minute, cause you never know what might happen around here. Amen. Hey, Amen. We just sit on it for a minute. But you better get ready, cause if you don't get, if you don't pull it, it ain't coming out. Now this is like one of those words you gotta pull. If you don't pull, I'm serious. I'll dis, I'll disconnect. I won't get it all out right. It won't be wrong. I was in the office the other day. I started touching on it. I started scaring myself. I did. I started scaring myself. The anointing started falling in the office. I said, I got to bury this. Let me take this back. So don't let me wait with this. Let me get it out because I believe it's for here, all right? But don't sit there and be like, all oh, spectating on me because you spectate on me. I'm going to go the other way. I'm going to miss it. I'm going to have to preach it next week. Come on now. Don't be doing that. Get in there and get it. Amen. So, Father, I just thank you, Lord, that you got a word. You got a word for this house. And, Lord, I just want to connect the anointing and what you're doing, Lord, and I just want to be obedient to what you got. That's the most important thing. And nobody come here to be anything but obedient because obedience is the key. I thank you for what you're doing in our life, Lord. And I know, I, know that, I know that whatever it takes to get this out, you're going to help us, Lord. I know we're ready to receive, God, and we're ready to go into a brand new faith. We need the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, I need you. I need you supernaturally to move and help us because I really believe um, we can go further 
if, if we if we connect because I just I want to hear from heaven and I want to go where you want me to go and do what it is you want me to do. I want to be obedient to the work of the Lord and the word of the Lord. So I just thank you, Lord, for this house. Thank you, Lord, for whatever it is we leave here. We know, God, that you're going to connect with and you're going to transform lives because of the word of God. Amen. And we just thank you for our Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Go with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Um, we're going to start with verse 6. 1 Corinthians 2, 6. I've been sitting on this uh, just for a minute, and I've been asking myself a question about messing me up a little bit about time. And time sometimes seems like it's working on our behalf. I really believe this moment now, timing means everything. And I believe that we're in a time. Now, I need, you, need you to pay attention. I need you to pull. You need to really pull in. I know, like some of you, you know, you need, I really believe that prophetically we're going to just let something loose and whatever takes place. I really believe that. Like I'm carrying weight. It's almost like you got to like kind of navigate it. So just just pull with me. I'm not trying to be spooky, stupid, weird. You know, I'm not trying to be like that. You know me better than that. It's not something you got to teach. It's something I got to lean in and spiritually press out. But I really believe it's weight that's going to carry. I believe that I'm going to answer some stuff. Because I believe sometimes we don't understand timing because timing is God's process. And and it's really it's really encouraging if you can kind of grab what I'm saying. And I know you will. And we'll work it together. And I'm going to kind of hover in it. I'm going to kind of like prophesy it out. But I'm going to just let me navigate it out, all right? Is that cool? Because the way it pulls is the way it will go. But I want you to know that stuff's going to get ready to start accelerating. Okay, now you got to get this. You got to understand accelerate. Okay, because I know what happens. We get stuck. We get stuck in timing, and and what it is is this: like we get we get weary in the well doing because the timing isn't working out the way we feel like the timing should work out, and we're looking at timing like timing like is a bad bad thing. But when I'm done with you tonight, you're gonna embrace the timing, because what we don't understand is timing is God's process. Okay. And when God wants to process you, he puts you in time. Because he's the eternal God. you got to catch me, man. He's an eternal God, and everything that's in eternity, we can never grab or obtain. Eternity is too far for us to comprehend. So what God has to do is he has to put it in the earth. I'm telling you, I'm going to drop weight on you. You better be ready for it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to zip the other way because you ain't ready for me yet. And I'm, it's cool. I'm not trying to be weird, dude. I just want it out. It's up to you what we do with it. See, you got to catch me. You're going to have to think in here tonight, and I know you can. I'm not trying to be weird with that, but catch me. God's eternity, and eternity is too big for us. You can never catch up to eternity. He is the Alpha and Omega. He's the everlasting God. He goes on forever. When God wants to shift something, change something, do something, he puts it in time. We don't understand time. Time frustrates us. Time gets us messed up. We think it's been too long. We've been processing too long. I've been waiting too long. I should be there by now. Timing doesn't seem like it's working in my natural mind. But I got news for you. Timing is the only place where God could produce progress in your life. We don't like it because it's uncomfortable. God could care less about your comfort. He's looking at your character. I didn't come to teach. I come here to preach. You got to catch it. Get where I'm going. God don't care about your comfort. He'll leave you uncomfortable for seasons of your life. He'll leave you lost in time. Come on. He is the God of eternity. Come on, somebody. He'll pluck you up out of where he found you at the perfect. See, this is where you got to understand something. In the fullness, every time God says fullness, he says in the fullness of time. Go look at your Bible. Every time you see these words, you see, and it happened in the fullness of time. It happened in the completion of time. It's five times in the Bible. He says, and it happened in the completion of time. When time has its fullness, guess what? The process is almost over. But God's going to put you in time. Because that's the only, I hope you record it, record it, because they're going to have to catch up to it. You're going to have to listen to it 42 times, but you're going to get it. See, it's okay. It's cool. It's weight, man. It's moving quick. See, God uses time to process your life. You hate it, but that's the way he does it, because if he left it in eternity, you'd never find it. Just come on. Let's go slow. It's all right. When it hit me, it made my head spin. It's going to make you spin, too. You're going to feel like you're in that altitude again, but you'll be all right. Come on. No, I'm serious. It'll make you spin a little bit because now you got to get me, okay? Because just get me, all right? Because here's what we got to when, – when, uh, see, it's kind of like this. You stand in between the pain and the promise. And the pain 
See, can you lead through pain? Because pain is a catalyst for everything. If it ain't no pain connected to it, you probably ain't worth nothing. You know what I mean? Pain is going to be the new threshold of your life. And how much pain you can handle is going to determine how far you can go. If you don't like pain, check out now because there's only one way through it. It's called production through pain. Come on, somebody. Now, now, timing, timing is miserable because timing, timing is, is a process, and we hate the process, but God uses time to produce the process in your life because without the process, you're never really going to come to completion. And I'm going to show you the only way to get change is it's got to go in time. I'm going to explain it. You'll see it. Let me just read this just for a minute. You'll see it, and, and we'll kind of work with it. Is that right? Because pro- here's the thing. Progress leads to process. If you want progress, you're going to go through the process. Most people left the church because they didn't like the progress. You don't want to hear me. See, they, ain't, they don't like the, they don't, listen to me. I'm going to preach. I didn't come here to teach. Listen, they don't like, they don't, there's some paint still left on the wall. It's going to be all right. Come with me. Come on, let's go out there a little bit. Woo, we get a little bit. Oh, come on. See, but see, I'm dropping weight with revelation. You can't, you got to think and act and get your, see, your head can't understand where I'm taking you. What I'm telling you ain't meant for your head. This is meant for your spirit. So I'll go back over and over again. I, I'm good at reruns. Let me just go slow. Okay. What happens is this. We want the progress, but we hate the process because the process that God uses is time. We get frustrated in the process, which is really the only way to progress. So what do we do? We get mad. We leave. Why do we leave? I don't like the pain of the process. See, some of you think you should be there by now, but you ain't ready. So hang on. Hold on to your seat. They don't like me, Bishop, but it's okay. All right, all right, come on. Look, you don't like it. You, you don't like it. Nobody likes it. I don't like it. You don't like it. I got frustrated about it, got mad. God answered my question. Come on, somebody. See, that's the difference. See, if you ask God questions, he'll give you answers. You might not like the answers, but he just, uh, and every time, oh, uh, man, I got one for you, right? Check this out. God wants to change stuff. Guess what he does? He pulls it out of eternity and puts it in time. I'm telling you, he's using it. You don't think so? In the fullness of when does everything come to completion? Fullness of God is eternal. Guess what? If he left it in eternity, you never catch up to it. Because once you get close to it, it'll be in your future. It'll never meet your now. So you know what God says? You want it, I'll put it in time. We get mad at time. It's chronological. It makes no sense. God lives in Kairos. It's all the time now. But guess what? To see something in your life, it's got to get in this earth. So how does he do it? He puts it in the earth. You pray and you ask and God puts it in the earth. Now here comes process. You don't like process. You ain't going to catch me. I can tell you already. You're going too slow. Come on. Let's get out of the scripture. Let's just come over here. It's all right. It's wait. It's cool. You're good. I love you. Come on, peace. We're good. We're, 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 come on. We're all good. We we'll just keep going over and over till we get it. Let me explain it to you. Let me break it down so you can see it, right? You're growing in God, right? It's cute for like the first three months. Then God starts the process. He don't talk no more. He ain't as loud as he used to be. You ain't getting goosebumps during worship no more. You, you prayed and you believed God. It's been three weeks. You can't handle it no more. You're in process. Nobody likes process. God heard you the first day, put it in the process. Guess what? You have not seen progress. You're getting mad. You want to quit. You don't want to go to church no more. You don't want to usher no more. You don't want to do this no more. You don't want to show up early no more. You ain't going to be on no visitation team. You quitting media already. Why? Because I don't like the process. And really what happens is this. You digress because I cannot stand the process, but God put it in time. Watch, want me to blow your mind? I'm glad you gave me this sweat towel. Watch, I'm going to blow your mind, right? God, God gets mad at the devil, right? I'm going to need this thing. God gets mad at the devil, right? So he takes him out of eternity and he traps him in time. He said, you can't be here no more, so I got to change stuff. When I'm going to change stuff, I'm going to change stuff the way I change it. So look here, Lucifer. You rose up against me, and you now to come out of this dimension into a new dimension because I'm changing you. You used to be above in an archangel that heaven had to hear, but guess what now? Now you're under my feet, so get in the earth and strap yourself. I'll trap you in time. I'll leave you in time, and one day your time will be up. Because I can't leave you in this dimension no more because you don't deserve to be there anymore. So now I'll trap you in the earth. I'll bind you by the confinement of time. And now one day your time will be up. And in the fullness of time, he will pay the price. 
So you pray in your little cute prayers, and you want something to come from heaven to earth. Guess what God does? He said, let me stick it in time. Because that's the only way to change eternal stuff to show up in your natural life. So I pull it out of time, and I put it in the natural's place, and I say, here you go. Enjoy it. You're getting so mad. You're getting so upset. You're flipping out. You're tripping. Okay? you tripping. You tripping. You ain't on drugs. Some of you are on drugs, but you get off drugs. You're all right. Look, but you tripping. You tripping. You tripping spiritually. Come on. You tripping. Why? What are you, you're, you're going, this is taking too long. I should have had this promise by now. I should have this ministry by now. They should have been delivered by now. Somebody should have got set free by now. I should have been healed by now. It's in time. I want the progress, but I hate the process. Woo! That'll preach right there. I want the progress, but I hate the process, and the process is wearing me out. So I'm trying to disconnect from the process because this is taking too long. But that's the dimension God's got to get it in is this earth realm. So guess what he does? He puts it on a time clock, and you hate it, but in the fullness of time, you can get what you're believing for if you can stand up long enough to get it. But what do we do? We try to quit on it, and we try to pull it out. Right? We get mad. Okay, you like me now. You start to smile a little bit. You're like, this little white joker's all right, man. Hang on. Let's say, I don't, I don't know if he's completely white. I don't know. I might be a couple flavors. Come on. My kids are wondering why I tan so good. Come on, somebody. Praise the Lord. Right? Look. Come on. Get this. Look, 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 look. <laughs> I tell you, everything starts making sense. You got, you know, watch, 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 watch. He said to Paul, he said, Paul, he said, what? He said, come up now. Come on now. But I got, I got to help you, okay? I'm going to help you, all right? So watch this. So now we want progress. Everybody wants progress, but we cannot stand the process. Right? Just right, tell the truth. Right? This, the process stinks. I just want it now. But watch what happens is this, right? Like, like I, I should be delivered by now. I should be there by now. The church should, whatever it is. You pick your own little thing. You all got it. This process is taking way too long, but I really want progress, but I cannot stand the process. And now time is really looking bad. But I got news for you. Time is the tool that God uses to make sure you're on time. Check it out, right? Look, I messed you up. You want to see it? What did Jesus, did Jesus' mama say? She comes up one day. Jesus is getting ready to do the first miracle ever did. She said what? She said, they need wine. He said, what's your, he said, no. He said, my time has not come. She said, you don't know what time it is, honey. <laughs> I'm going to leave. They don't get it, mom. He, ain't, he said, no, you don't understand. She said, you don't understand. The process is over. This first miracle you're getting ready to do. The process has now come to completion. So now what I need you to do is step into, come on, somebody, step into what you've been in process to complete. You don't understand it, but go do what? She goes around, and what does she say? She said, go fill up the water pots and whatsoever he tells you to do, do it. Right? She, she said, go do what he tells you to do because whatever he tells you to do, go work. He, she said, what? He said, my time has not come. She said, your time is now. Whatever he says, do, you follow it. It'll work. Why? Because get me, watch this, check it out. Watch this. Now, this gets cool because, right, we, we blow through the process. Okay? Okay? And now what are we seeing? We're seeing this thing speed up. Eventually, it'll speed up. So let me, let me pull you in so you can get this because if I go too quick, I'm going to miss you. All right? So watch this. Okay? Let's go slow. I'm in the pro I want the progress. So once I start looking for progress, that means going forward, guess what shows up? Process. Process is time. Because to get it out of eternity, we've got to get in the earth realm. That means God put in a time clock in the fullness of time. You with me? Okay, this is getting good. You with me? Everybody all right? You're all cool, right? Nobody's, nobody's tripping out here. Come on, right? Here we go, okay? So what am I seeing? So why, why, why am I saying that? Because you got the pain before the promotion and you don't like it. Come on. That's the problem. You, you want, you see, you're going to have pain before the promotion, but when you're stuck in the promotion, everybody trips out over it and gets mad about it. So let me help you, okay? Because this will get you there. I don't understand what this dude's saying. You pay attention. You're going to get me. Ready? Here's what I'm saying. You're frustrated. And you're frustrated, and you're mad, and you get angry, and you get jacked up. And this was cute for a little bit, but it ain't cute no more because it's starting to take too long to come to pass. And I'm getting frustrated. And you can't be faithful when you don't have God like yeah, well, you ain't that faithful when you don't have God confirming everything to you every eight minutes. And you're trying to walk in what you heard. See, look, if you can't walk in what you heard, I don't really care what you've been hearing. Because what you, look, I'm telling you, I'm hitting somebody in the head. Listen, see, what am I saying? You, like, oh, God, confirm it. Why God got to tell you the same thing he told you ten months ago? 
but he ain't dense. What's wrong with you? Pay attention. You're looking. You know what that is? That's the pain of the process. I don't like the process that it's taking to get me from where I am to where I want to be. It's taking too long. I'm getting frustrated in it. So I start making excuses about the process because I'm tired of the progress. But that's why, that's why people leave. They get tired of the process. Here's the thing, though. Watch this. Time is on your side. Let me show you why. Because we never understood what time was all about. Never seen it before. All these years preaching, never got it. Right? I used to think time was bad until I figured it out. Everything we have is in eternity. And the only way to change stuff is take it out of eternity and put it in the timeline that we live in. So you ask God for the stuff, right? And then all of a sudden, what do you start getting frustrated about? I'm getting frustrated about why it's taking so long. Okay, now get excited. You used to look at time like it's a bad thing, but the only way God can get anything done is he's got to take it out of eternity and put it in the earth time. Check it out. The only way to get something from God is i got to take it out of this dimension and put it in this. Remember Daniel said this? He said, I prayed. God said, I heard your prayer the first day you prayed. I'm trying to get this thing in the earth and get it to you, but the problem was what? I had interference on the way. 21 days, there was interference running around. I couldn't get it over, right? He said, but I heard you the first day you prayed. I heard you and I got it loose, amen? You ain't seen it yet because it's trapped in time, but it's going to show up. Just don't get weary and I'll come there. What he said, the angel came to what? Encourage him and let him know what he said he was going to do, he was going to do. Why you got to get encouraged? Because when you're stuck in time, you don't know when stuff's coming to pass. And you start getting faint in what you're doing. But how about this? Every promise you ever needed, everything you ever needed from God is eternity. He said yes and amen to every promise. It's in the heavenly realm, right? And the minute you pray, what did God say? I'll give you what you have need of. Guess what God does? He hears what you say and guess what he does? The minute he hears it, he takes it out of this dimension and he tries to force it in this earth dimension. And now watch this. You getting mad at what's taking so long. Wait a minute. If the only way to get the progress is go through the process, see, that's the thing. We didn't, church never taught us this. Embrace the process because the process is the only way to get the progress. What am I going to do now? Now I'm going to embrace the place of progress because I understand how God's doing it because he's got to get it from one dimension to another dimension. And this is the good news. If it's on a time clock, that means my time's coming. So instead of looking at this thing like it's a bad thing. See, because when it was in eternity, I couldn't catch up to it. When it's in eternity, I can't get it. It's too far. It's moving. It's gone, man. He, he Come on, look about this. He is an eternal God. He's got to get it out of that dimension and get it in this dimension. But when it gets in this dimension, we get fuzzy in the head thinking, what's taking so long? you got to understand this is the only way God can get it to you. Now you're not mad about the progress, the process, or any of it. Why? Because this is the only way to get it to me, God. So instead of me getting frustrated in the season of life that I'm in, let me just get steadfast in doing what I know to do. Because if it's in a time clock that can get it to manifest in this earth realm, then I'm in the greatest place I can be. Why? Because God didn't forget about me. I'm just in, look, you're going to have to start walking around here and go, excuse me, I'm in process right now. I'm making some progress. You're going to have to deal with my funky attitude maybe for a minute. But here's the thing. But here's the chart. Here's the problem. That's the problem right there. You get all funky in your attitude. You get all stinking in your thinking. You get all messed up. And then the next thing, you compromising. Compromising on your destiny, hanging around with a bunch of clowns, all this messed up junk, and the only reason why is that I don't like the process, so guess what I'm going to do? I don't like the process because I don't see the progress, so I'm going to check out of the progress, and I'll just jack up the whole process. I ain't a tongue twister. Let me go real slow. I'm trying. Let me explain to you. I'm trying to grow in God, but I'm going to take the easy way out. I'm going to take the easy way out. Really what it is, you don't like the process. And you're mad, and you try to get out. Yeah, I'm preaching better than your amen to me, but I knew that was coming. But that's all right. Come on, right? But now let me get you slow. Time don't bother me. Now watch this. I got messed up. This is the part you got me, right? Because check it out. Because once it enters into the time realm, man, I'm telling you, right? Think of that, right? I got, that's the only way God could change something. And anything he's going to change, he's got to put in time. You're getting mad about time. I'm getting excited about time. I started laying back in it. You need to lay back in it. Just lay back and coast. Yeah, yeah you got it. Look at you. Here's the thing. You want to know why? I, I help you, all right? See, because the devil knows this. Check it out. He knows if he jacks up, he jacks up your process, he'll take your praise. See, he don't want you worshiping God. 
He'll do anything, that joker do anything you do to get you to stop worshiping God. Right? So what he does is this. When you get in the process, you get frustrated. That's why you ain't got no praise, some of you. I'm meddling right now. Yeah, I'm all up on your junk right now. I'm in your junk, and you don't like it. I don't really care. I live in your junk. Make you mad, too, while I'm here. Now I'm going to leave. I don't care. Look. You know, somebody like, I got to go see you in Florida next week. I don't care. Praise the Lord. Look, check it out, right? Because this is what happens. We don't like the process, and now I can't find your praise no more because you're all messed up. And I don't want to go too quick because if I, if I just start shouting, you're going to miss it. You ain't got no praise no more. You remember you had that praise before? You ain't got that same praise. You want to know why, God? Because you were in the process. And if you can't praise me during the process, why in the world will you ever praise me when the progress is over? You won't do it. See, that's the problem. God, God's trying you out. He's, te he's testing you out. See if you're one of them jacked up models that can only praise me when it's going good. See if you're one of No, that's what he wants to say. Can you praise me when you're, yeah, yeah, you all jumping up and down when everything's going good. Y'all got praise the Lord, hallelujah. Y'all buck wild up in here when everything's going great. But let me see you stub your toe, honey. You ain't got no shout no more. You ain't got no shout no more. You don't know if God's God. You look like, you look like John the Baptist in a jail cell. Is he the Christ or should we go look for another? Come on, you better cut it out. Why? It's the process. It's the process. See, I'm going to help you because now you're going to be like, man, I'm in, the, I'm in the process. You know, you're going to be all cool. You go to work tomorrow, be all jacked up or whatever it is. You'll be like, I'm in process. You're going to tell people. You know what I mean? you be painting, doing something. Somebody get mad, you know, get you mad. I get mad too. I get mad all the time, right, especially in traffic. Just tell them, man, I'm processing this. Shut up and leave me alone. Just do your thing. Yeah, you got to go through it, man. Just tell them you're processing. You get mad at somebody at work, say, I'm processing. Cut it out. Gonna be like, what in the world is up with this guy? He went to church last night. He's got all jacked up. Comes to church, all processing. I'm processing. Look at your neighbor say, You process him. Look at your neighbor say, Process. See, because we want progress. Come on, right? Look, 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 look. I got a whole bunch more, man. You go, You're all right. We're okay. We're going to navigate. We're going to be. A See, look, because I'm standing between the pain and the promise. This ain't easy, right? Look, because you want to know what it is? Are you changing what you're saying? See, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Is, is, is it true? I'm right. I know I'm good at this, right? I'm annoying. I'm as annoying as all get out, right? Check it out, right? It, this is true, right? This, this, this is like a nice, right? I'm going to get it all sweaty. All right. Check it out, right? Think about this. Ain't this true? When I'm in the process, because I got to make progress, right? If anything's going in the completion of time, everything's got a completion of time. Everything's got a completion of time. Here's the thing. I don't like the progress. It's going to get me there. I don't like the process that it takes to get there. Guess what happens? I'm stopping my praise. Now watch this one. Are you changing what you're saying during the process? See, write it down because if you are, you ain't ready yet. See, because I, I ain't saying what I said before. Come on, what I say? Yeah, I'll praise the Lord. Glory to God. <laughs> yeah, come on. I'm meddling right now. It's okay, right? You, I could say, are you saying the same thing now you were saying then? Or is the process messing you up? Yeah, I know. Don't look at me in that tone of voice. I know what y'all thinking. I'm not saying nothing I was saying before because now I got pressure. I don't like it. I'm about cursing up in here, Pastor Chris. It's okay. Why? I know what's going on. See, the pressure, there's pressure from the process. That's it ain't, it ain't no fancy word. It's, you're being processed right now. You pastor in a church, you're being processed. You go through every, everybody's buildings getting processed. Why? Who wants progress? Here's the thing. If you don't want progress, you know what you do? You'll detach and leave. That's what people do. They stop growing. People just sitting in church. Praise God. They don't know nothing. They've been saying praise God for 50 years. Don't know nothing about the Bible. Don't know nothing. They ain't got one promise. They just go to church. What good is that? Go ahead. You sitting next to them, not me. Come on, right? It happens everywhere you go. They're like, yeah, praise the Lord. What would he say? I don't know what he said. He's just really screaming. I can't understand the word this guy's saying. Come on, right? But guess what I'm saying? I, see, because there's the thing. To grow, you got to have the pain. Yeah. If you're going to grow, you got to go through pain, and pain is a process. You with me? You with me? So how does God change something? He takes it out of one dimension, puts it in another dimension. We live in a dimension called time. Try to get out of it. You can't. But here's the cool part. I got good news for you. After you get good at it and the process is complete, he'll speed it up. Because he ain't got no problem going forward. See, I got, you ready for this? You ready for this? What did Jesus do? Jesus gets in there, right? He said, go make water to wine. He goes, okay, cool. This is going to be great. How's it water one minute? It's wine the next minute. 
He blew through the mode of fermentation. Why? Because now time is not against me. Time is for me. I switched the dimension, and now I understand that I'm pushing forward. What took me time to process, now what? I'm speeding along in the process, and now I'm manifesting stuff I couldn't manifest before. I'm not worried about fermentation. Why? Because water turned to wine. How did water turn to what? Oh, instantly, automatically. Why? Because now we're beyond the time warp that we were living in before, and God is now accelerating me forward and accelerating you forward because when the process is complete now you can be trusted in another dimension we didn't know you could stand in before but the key is this see you want to know why this one's harder to push out because I'm empowering you to do it see when you preach listen man I can preach stuff that makes you get happy I can preach stuff that makes you change getting happy don't change you today what I'm telling you will change you if you catch what I'm saying I'm in a process you're in a process and if you don't like it, guess what? You're going to try to buck out of it and get out. But if you can stay in long enough to let this thing come to pass, guess what will happen? God will drop in you what you couldn't do before and speed you up into a dimension. You're going to go from one dimension to another dimension because why? I've been processed. You're not trusted if you ain't been processed. Listen to me, why? And then when the progress shows up, you're going to speed into this thing. It's like I preached before, that woman that showed up, that Syrophoenician woman. How in the world did Jesus step in time and give out stuff? Because he just spoke, he stepped in. Why? Because once you get the accelerated thing done, it's done. You go in it. You got, you're getting trusted with it, but here's the thing. You don't go through the process. Come on. You ain't going to make that kind of progress. Look, I'll show you. You ready for it? Cause, but see, here's the thing. I didn't just come here. I, come, I dropped the word on you. See, this is different. This is different than preaching. I'm dropping a word on you. See, because you're going to have to activate this thing. I'm going to show it to you, all right? I'm going to show it to you. You doing good? Look, 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 look. <laughs> I won't mess you up, right? This is so good, right? Because I started thinking about the dimension that God lives in. God stood in a place where he said, I can't swear by nobody but myself. There was nobody as great as me to swear by me, right? Ain't it cool? God said, look, I couldn't find nobody. You all right? You doing okay? Come on, right? I can't find nobody to agree with me, so I'll swear by myself. You know, check this out, right? I thought about this. They said, well, God, you're making my word come to pass. Check it out, right? God's like, I don't care about your word. He messed me up. You ready for this? Check it out. He said, what you going to do? Check this. I'm going to jack you up, all right? I said, what you say? He said, and I, maybe I heard God wrong. You, you, you feel it out. He said, no, 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 no. I said, read it. He said, and, and God could not swear by nobody by himself, so he made a promise unto himself. Check this out, Jerry. You're going to like this, right? I said, God, that's my word. He said, no. He goes, w -w -w he said, I ain't making your word come to pass. I'm making my word come to pass. But when your word becomes my word, then you can get something done. He said, I didn't make a promise to you only. I made a promise to myself first. My covenant's better than your covenant. My covenant's better than your agreement. My ability's greater than your ability. So, yeah, look at this. God said, I cannot lie. He's what? He swore to himself. God's not making your word come to pass. He's making his word come to pass. And when your word's his word, that's why you got the pressure to give up his word. That's why you got the pressure to give up what he said. That's why you got the pressure to give up what he talked about. He ain't Look, he said, I'll make my word come to pass. He said, he calls those things that be not as though they were. Guess what? What? You start calling those things like God called them, they'll come to pass. Guess why you got pressure? Guess why you got that process? That's why you got that place. You want to know what? Hold you back. Hold you back from what? Holding you back from all that progress. Why? Because you'll stop. Because yeah, I don't like I don't like the process, so I want I want to check out. I don't want it. God said, look, you say you got to stay in it, because if you stay in it, it'll come to completion. Here's the thing. Look, I'll show you where I know where you're at. You're in the process. Everybody in this building is in the process. You process in one way or another. Here's the deal. If you don't know how to understand it, you'll get, you'll get weary in it. And you'll get weary in it, and you'll try to dip out and say, man, I don't like this no more. I want out. How do I get out? Or you'll frustrate the process, and you'll, fr you'll get the process so messed up, and you'll frustrate the thing to the point where you'll stop it. And you don't grow out of it. Look, I'm going to show you. I'm going to help you, all right? Watch. You got to agree with it, though. You got to catch me. I know you're here with me. Come on. Look at this. Watch this. You all right? Watch this. Yeah, no, I like it, man. You're going to see it. You get it. Look at it. Look at it. It's kind of like this. Let me give it to you like this. I'll give you this. If you're standing, look, when God puts it in the process, he puts it in the time. So basically, he puts it in time. So God, so you over here like me, God, and God goes, okay, here we go. And he puts it in a time. 
And now it says this, for such a time, for such a time, for such a time, in the completion of time. So now I start thinking about it, okay, like you're thinking about it, I'm saying, so you're trying to tell me everything that I'm believing God for, the minute I put it in motion, gets stuck in time. Absolutely, because it was in eternity. The Bible says it reached within the veil. Come on, the glory. And we pull into through hope into the earth. So basically what we do is we look into that word of God. We go in there with a hopeful anticipation. We find what it is. We go within the veil where the glory of God is. That's what the word, the word of God is eternal forever. Come on, somebody. And if it's eternal, guess what? You can't catch up to it because it's always moving ahead of you. Come on, right? So the only way, so check it out, right? We are an eternal being trapped in an earthly body. The only way we're going to get anything done in the earth is it's got to come through the, well, got to come through us. It ain't going to happen any other way. So what are we doing? We're reaching up into what? The, the heavenly, and we're pulling into the earthly what it is we want to see. That's great, all this stuff. Oh, want to see it? I'll mess you up, right? All these promises laid up in heavenly places. They ain't doing me no good in heaven. Come on, Ephesians 1, 3 says what? All spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. Where are they? Yes and amen. Every promise of God, you can have it. We come to church, we talk big, right? We talk, we talk healing, we talk ability, we talk anointing, we talk victory, we talk breakthrough, we talk rich, we talk overflow, we talk supernatural, we talk the God who's more than enough. Come on, right? When have you ever come in here and we, we don't talk defeat, we talk victory. Well, where is it? Come on, well, get all excited about it, bro. You come in here, jump around on Sunday, guess what you got to do? You hear it in the heaven realm, and then you pull it in the earth realm. And once you take faith and pull it in the earth realm, guess what? It's got a time clock on it. And the Bible says this, if you won't faint before your harvest, you'll see your harvest come to pass. But what happens? We pull it in this realm, and now what do we see? The minute we get the promise, guess what shows up? The process. I don't like the process, man. I believe God for this marriage for about eight minutes. I believe God for this money for about three days. I believe God for my healing about a week. I'm going to believe this stuff for about 22 minutes. I'm going to believe we got a vision from God. That's the thing. How you get all these people to follow you in a vision from God? Real simple. You got to keep it before them. Otherwise, they start checking out. Why? Because you say, oh, I don't know. Are we really going to do it? Oh, my God. It's been a week. Is he really serious about what he's saying? Oh, my God. How? Oh, praise God. Yo, praise the Lord. We got to make a difference in America. Yeah, who's going to show up Saturday morning and do the work? Come on, somebody. Everybody's flapping their mouth. Ain't nobody doing nothing. Why? Because the minute you say, I'm in, guess what shows up? Pressure. But guess what shows up? The process. The process. And I don't like the process because the process produces pain. And the only way you grow is with pain. See, that's the thing. We've been looking, right? You ain't, you ain't got no pain, you ain't going to grow. The only way you grow is pain. Oh, this is a great sermon. Praise God. When's he coming back? You want to grow? Pain. You want to grow? Pain. And you look at everything you grew through. It took pain to get you through. Yeah. You want to know why? You're going to get pain? You want to know why? Because guess what? You don't like the process. And the pain is going to make you change. And the process has been sent by God to do it. That will preach way better than you. Amen. But I knew I had work to do. You think about it. Everything in life is going to take pain. You don't think so? It's going to take pain to grow. You know why? Because you're going to lose a little bit of you and the pain going through the process. Yeah, you're going you're gonna to lose some of that little attitude you got. Come on, somebody bless the Lord. Yeah, guess what's going to do it? Guess what's going to do it? Guess what's gonna do it? Well, I, they don't know what my anointing is all about in the church. You're going to go through it, all right? You're going to have a, yeah, you're going to love it. It's going to be great. Just hold on tight. It's like a roller coaster ride. Woo-hoo, here we go. Right? Yeah. Oh, oh nobody asked me my opinion. That's because nobody cares. Praise the Lord. Hang on tight. Woo, come on, baby. Let's go. Woo, praise the Lord. Let me tell you what music I think we should sing. Praise the Lord. Let me tell you what. We ain't singing to you. Get over it. Come on, somebody. Hey, come on with me. Come on, come on. Come on. Hey. Come on, living way. Come on, let's go. World church. Come on, right? I know how y'all, right? Oh, praise God. I went to church and I've, oh, Bishop, man, he's the best. Oh, hallelujah. Look when he said, he said we could be delivered. We could be, delivered. oh, praise the Lord. You run around the building. Woo, yeah. Stand on the chairs, truck a chair. Yeah. Throw spit balls. I don't care what you do. Wing snot. Do whatever you got to do. Flinging it, singing it, doing it, bring it, right? Oh, praise the Lord. Next week, you can't find them. They don't even come back. Where'd you go, you snot slinging, loving Jesus? Come on, where you at? I don't like the process. They told me I gotta. They told me I gotta lay down that door. Oh my God! God started dealing with me about it. No, I don't like the process. So what do we do? We disconnect. So here's the thing. So what did I come here to tell you? Because I'm not gonna keep you all night. You know what I told you? You're trapped in time. <laughs> and, it's, and instead of embracing it, you're fighting it. 
Oh, you better get ready for it. Instead of embrace it, I got excited. I got so excited. I, I got delivered. I delivered myself before I'm going to deliver you. Come on, somebody. Right? I got like, whoa. I started getting like, hey. Hey. I was like, whoa. I'm like, where you? I was like looking at people in the church. I'm like, you so jacked up. You're time warp. You're just like warp. Just lay back in it, babe. Just chill out. Why? Because the thing is, is you don't understand. see. This is the cool part, right? Think about what I said. He's trying to change something. So he looks at Lucifer. He goes, Lucifer, you jacked up. You're in an eternal dimension. I gotta get you to an earth dimension because I gotta get something to change in your life. So I'm gonna trap you in the earth and put you in time. It's a prison. It's a prison. It's a prison. You ain't got it yet. It's a prison. You gotta praise your way out. Paul and Silas were trapped in the prison. They trapped in the prison. They trapped in the prison. He said, what? How you get out? Praise your way out. It's the only way. See, the pressure's trying to get your praise. See, sometimes you just got to say, praise the Lord. Because you don't understand. This process is crazy. This process is too much. This process is painful. This process is miserable. This process is wearing me out. This process is not. This process, I don't like it. Look at your neighbor and say, you're getting processed. But they don't like it in here, man. Look at the other neighbor say, you're getting processed. Remember when you was all cute? Let's get married. Oh, sweet. Praise God. Yeah, now you're processing. <laughs> Forty years later, I'm still stuck in the process. <laughs> Somebody help me, bro. Come on, right? No, hey, come on. You want that little kid. Oh, that little kid's so cute, ain't he? Wasn't that little kid so cute? A kid's 50 years old, still living in your basement. That's real cute. <laughs> That's cute. Come on, right? That's process. Right? Come on, right? Come on, touch me, right? Touch me, right? You know what I'm saying? Process. Woo! Are you getting me yet? Yeah, I know you're looking at me, right? You're in the process. But if you want the progress, you gotta go through the process. But here's the thing, if you can hang on long enough, if you can hang on long enough, if you can hang on long enough. Come on, come on, come on. He'll speed you through. Because when it's done. When it's done, you're going to get to ready to accelerate out of what was keeping you confined. you got to get this, right? Because I start thinking about it. If you don't understand the system, time, think about that, man. It's the only way God can change something in your life. And he puts it in time. And it's chronological. And here's the thing. In the midst of the time, what do we do? We get frustrated. We feel abandoned. Watch this, check this out. Moses, Moses got stuck in time. You want to know why? He wasn't done with the progress because he couldn't handle the process. God seen something in him that was great when he wasn't ready. And that 11-day journey could have been over if he would have allowed the process to take completion. But he had to wander around just a little longer until he could be ready. 40-year journey, an 11-day trip took him 40 years. You say it was the people. Well, the people that led him through the progress and the process, they wound up destroying him in the end because he wasn't ready even then to deal with the people. He smacked the rock one too many times. Come on, people. You know what I'm saying. Don't you ever despise the process because the process is the key to longevity, to making it for the progress. I'm telling you, man, listen to me. This is so stinking good if you catch what I'm saying because this is where you're so frustrated. You're so, listen to me, guys. Listen to me. Listen to me. This is where you're frustrated. Look, they're preaching the word, man. You're getting the word. Everybody's getting the word. But when we get the word, guess what shows up? Who wants, pro hey, who wants progress? Who wants to go forward in your Christian walk? Put your hand down. Guess what it's going to take? Then y'all mad. Find the world, Jesus, God Almighty. Come on, right? Come on, right? Come on, right? You're going to be a leader. Come on, right? We find the world. Let me can I help you. God's gonna bring people to help you in this process. You ain't gonna like them. Can I help you, bro? Can I help somebody in here? God is gonna use people like sandpaper to smooth you out. God, look, you need relationship in life. You wanna know why? You know what's funny? Praise God. Glory to God. We're going to do good. Let's go to a connect group. Connect groups are great. Let's go to a connect group. You know there's going to be one jerk in the connect group? Wake up. You don't think there's a jerk in the connect group? Man, I went to a couple of my church. I spot the jerk before I even get there. I said, that dude's not going to shut up, man. 
He's going to talk and talk and try to preach to me. Praise God, Pastor Chris. What do you think about this? I said, I'm just coming to chill out, bro. You're doing enough. To, right? Guess why he sent? You need him. Oh, no, we need to get rid of him. No, you need him. He's helping you process. Oh, you can walk in love. Yeah, let me see you do it now. Y'all cute. Y'all cute little Christians. Look cute, smiley little you. Smell real good, too. Yeah, y'all cute. Here comes brother so-and-so. Let's see how cute you are now. You about ready to cuss at the small group. Come on. Say amen. I'm, I, you know I ain't lying. You sitting next to him. Just look straight ahead. Come on, somebody. Come on. Tell the truth, right? Right? Here comes sister know-it-all to connect group Sunday. Come on. Bring it. Bring it. Say amen. Bring it. Come to church every six months. Got an answer for everybody. Don't miss a connect group, though. That, sister Big Mouth won't miss a connect group for the next 62 weeks. She thinks it's a preaching prophecy time. Come on. Help me. He didn't tell me nothing. I don't know nothing. Listen to me. Tell me right here now. Watch. You want to know why they're there? They're there to help you. Because God's going to bring people to help you in the process you don't like. Usually it's your spouse. Come on, somebody say amen. <laughs> That's true. No, it's true, right? Tell the truth, right? It's, it's sandpaper for your destiny. You either going to embrace it or let it. Your pastor, you like him all the time? No, you don't. Don't lie. You talk about him behind his back. I know you do. Just repent quick. It'll be over. I'm talking. Guess what? We're talking about you too. Praise God. Yeah, we are. Yeah. I don't know none of your names. Not me and him, but I am. I talk about all those jokers at the house. I pray, praise God. My wife goes, my God in heaven, what would they do? I said, pray. You know they're talking about me. I think they're nuts. They think I'm nuts. We all get together. It's one big happy family. You talk about Uncle Mike, Uncle Joe. I told him the other day, I said, if they had something to do with their life, they'd leave me alone, these people. Praise be to God. God bless them all. I pray for them and pray in the Holy Ghost. Bless them all out. Praise God. I bless you out. It's like a gang. We're like a gang. You're like, we're Crips. In and out, whatever. Hey, man, east side, west side. Yo, I'm east side, west side. I'm upside down, bro. I'm so jacked up in this job. I'm just trying to process my way through this thing and stay safe to the end. Glory to God. You paying attention to me? I don't like the process neither, but it's the only way to get to the progress, and I got to go through it because that way you know I got to grow too. Yeah, I thought I did good walking in love. Yeah, yeah, me too. Yeah, I thought I did good at all this stuff. Yeah, I was great. Praise God. Until somebody showed up. The world, look, the world be great if I was the only one in it and nobody else had another opinion but mine. Can I get an amen? Thank you very much. Come on, tell the truth, right? But here's the key, and don't miss this, right? Jesus gets to the day. Now, I'll show you this, right, because I got a word in here. Is this cool? So it's going to help you, right? Because some of you right now, you're really where I'm saying. Now, listen to me. I know I caught you in the spirit, and I didn't. I'm funny. But catch this, right Right? You're stuck in, right now, you're stuck. Listen to me, you're stuck in the process. Y'all are. But I got news for you because I'm going to take you back here, right? If you connect to this word, you'll start embracing. Listen to me, you'll embrace, you'll embrace the process. You will. Because you want to know what? I know, see, here's my thing. Why, why am I feeling this? Because you're closest to you ever been. You ain't frustrated in it. It's probably not on time yet. It's the only way you can get it. Are you catching me? Did that make sense? I'll go slow. No, I'm not trying to be this. This ain't preacher hype. Check me. This, this ain't preacher hype. Ready? It's the only way to get something from heaven to earth. God says you want it, so the only way I can change it is I put it in time. I got to Think about it, right? He said, Lucifer, you got a, you got a problem. Look, you ready for it? No, seriously, check this out, right? Look, God takes Adam and Eve. Can I help you? I'm not detaching. I'm just going slow because I don't want to go too far ahead and miss it. He takes Adam and Eve. He goes, look. He said, here's the deal. What? I don't want you to eat of the tree. Why? Because I don't need you to change. I don't want to stick you in the confinements of earth. I want to keep you in the spiritual realm. But if you do what I don't tell you to do, and look, check it out, right? She eats it. She don't really get in trouble, and nothing's really that big a deal. He does it, gets in trouble, and gets kicked out of heaven. He said this. He said, listen, go slow, right? Watch what happens, right? He said, now i got to take you from the dimension you were in and bring you to another dimension I didn't want you to be in. I didn't want you to change, but now I got to stick you in time. You weren't stuck in time, but now you'll be stuck in time, and you got to leave here, and you can't come back into eternity. You got to stay in this place for a while. Why? Because I got to get something done in time. So I got to find somebody to believe me in time to get an Adam to come into an earth and change the thing, and he'll be on time, but he didn't make it right. So now I got to find an Abraham, right? The pro he screwed up the process. So he got mad and said, well, God wasn't mad like, oh my God, I'm so mad. But he said, now I got to do something different because you messed it up. And now I got to take you out of the dimension I wanted you to be in because you didn't listen to me. You got goofy. And I had to, now what did you do? You changed. What did you change? You changed the place I had you in. So now I put you in this time warp. Go slow, right? 
Abraham shows up, right? And God says, believe me, if you want to believe me, right? He goes through the process of Isaac. It's painful. He doesn't like it. But God's like, if it doesn't cost you something, it ain't going to be something. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you and I'm going to put you through the Isaac moment. It's a process. It's painful. You don't like it, but I'm emptying you and you're finding me and you're building what you need to be. And really what God wanted was the key was this, is what Adam didn't have, he wanted reverence. He says this when he goes to take, he takes the knife. Remember what he said? He takes the knife, he goes to hit him, and he would say, he said, don't do it. I know you fear me, or I know you reverence me, or I know you have awe for me. What was he saying? You reverence my word. You're obedient to me. The first guy wasn't. You are. And now that the process is complete, now I can give you the promise. So what I'm going to do, Abraham, I'm going to give you here what you should get there. He sped time up. It, the Bible says Abraham was accredited righteousness that Jesus was going to give in the future. He said, I'll give you what you need in the future now. See, look, when the process is complete, God will speed up time. That's why he says, fill up the water pots with water, but watch me blow through fermentation because now we need miracles. Oh, you missed it. When the process, look, Abraham, what? I'm going to process you. I know you're not going to like the process. The process is going to lead you to progress. It's going to be painful, though. Abraham's screaming and moaning through the whole thing. He's like, I don't know how it could be. Blah, blah, blah. She's dead. I'm dead. Everything's dead. What do we do? God said, just hang in there. I'm El Shaddai. I'm the God who's more than all. The Bible says that when he finally finishes the process, he gets the progress, and God goes, now I'll give you the promise. Through faith and patience, Abraham obtained the promise. You're going to hear this again. Come on, stay with me, right? Come on. And what does he do? He says, okay, now I'll give you in this dimension what you should get that dimension. I'm going to give you the gift of the the blessing of Abraham came on the Gentile before the Gentile ever got the message. So what did he do? Because Abraham went through process, he hit the progress, which showed up with the promise. And the promise was in the future, 2,000 years ago later when Christ was going to hang on a cross. He said, I'll give you all that now. You processed it. Jesus gets there. He says, what? He said, my time has not come. What she said, she said, do what he tell you to do. Watch what happens. He sped up time. What did he speed up? The fermentation process. It was water and then it turns into wine. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. That's miracles. The first miracle that he did. Are you with me? Are you cool with this? You all right? You okay with this? So what does he do? To change something, to change something, it has to leave that eternal dimension and step into an earth dimension. So now watch this. If you hear me tonight, I understand what's going on now. I'm stuck in the process. So what am I supposed to do? Keep my praise. I'm in process. What do I do? Keep saying what I'm saying. I ain't saying nothing different. How about you? See, here's the key. He's trying to get your mouth to say something different than what you were saying that got you in this mess. See, God's... God's, let me tell you something about God. God's jacked up. God ain't right. So I mean, God ain't right in the head. I'm telling you right now. That joker will trick you. Oh, that joker's a, he will trick you in a good way. He'll say, hey, come on out in the water. It's great. You get out there now, what? He's like, do what I said. Hey, praise the Lord. And then you're in the middle of this mess. How many you know, you got, how many you got all excited about the promise? Then you get all excited about the promise. Yay! 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 Amen! Yay! You're like Elmo running around here. Yay! All a bunch of Elmos. Yay! Yay! You grab it and run. Yay! Yeah, you're running around church. Yay! Then here come Tuesday. Now what do I do? You looking for bishop who want to choke him? You the one that told me this stuff works. You told me this stuff works. You said this. They're trying to call him. You texting him. Texting him. I don't think you're a false prophet. You said this. Oh, no, this don't work. I'm a, I want my money back. Give me back my offering. Give it back. Give it back. Give it back. I'm going to church now. Get my money. Where's my money? Where's my money? Did you deposit that? I want my money back. You said it was a good measure, press down, shaking, nothing. I'm still broke. Ah. Yeah, it's all cute, right? It's all cute. I know you. Come on, somebody. Are you all cute? But then what do you got to do? You go through the process now to see the promise. Yeah, I'm preaching way better than you all, man, because they're in it. You're stuck in it. You're stuck in it. But now, wait a minute. But wait a minute. What happens if I start embracing time? I got a funny feeling we'll speed it up. Watch this. Because I know I'm stuck in the process. Check this out. Are you frustrated? Then you're making progress. If you weren't frustrated, I'd get nervous. I might think you're backslidden. 
I just, I just dropped the bomb on you. It's like, it's like, you ever know when you, you all lit fireworks, you know, not too long ago? I just lit the fuse. You know, you just, shh. If you weren't frustrated, I'd get nervous. Because if you ain't frustrated, you probably haven't started the process yet. <laughs> I'm going to throw the mic. Somebody's looking at me. I don't know what this guy's saying. You know what he's saying? You'll figure it out next week. See, 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 if I wasn't making progress, I wouldn't be frustrated in the process. So I'm making a little bit of progress. See, see, look, 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 look. Look, I got hair. It grows. You know what I'm saying? You can't see it all, but it grows. You see it grow? No, but you wake up a couple days later, that joker got some growth to it. Come on, right? You know what I'm saying? It grows, right? You clip it too, right? It grows, right? It might not be a lot, but it grows. If I leave it for two couple weeks, I got a lot, right, grow? Did you see it happen? No, but come on. But what's happening? Process is happening. I don't see process. I don't see progress sometimes, but it's happening. You know what I'm saying? I'm making progressional steps. When I'm making progress, they're baby steps. You might not see them, but just like my hair's growing, I don't see that. I'm making growth steps. I'm making growth steps. I'm processing. I'm progressing. I'm progressing. I'm pro- But guess I'm going through the process. I don't like the process. The process is bugging me. I'm done. I'm checking out. Ready? We're going to go. Right? I don't like it. I don't like it. But if I'm not frustrated, I'm probably not making any progress. So now what's going on? I'm frustrated with the process. But the process is called growth. So here's my deal. So now wait a minute. So wait a minute. So then I'm running around the other day. I get it. I got it. I got it. I got it. I'm trapped in time. <laughs> I'm trapped in time. You know, I start thinking about, doo, 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 doo. you know, you start thinking about the Twilight Zone. I thought about that stupid ride, that jerky ride we go on. What's that thing? The bottom falls out, makes you all mad. Tara Tara, man. I'm stuck on Tara Tara the rest of my life. Glory to God. You ever remember that? Those were the Twilight Zone. <laughs> stupid thing. Oh, my God. I'm like, great. My life's going to be the twilight zone forever. It's, right? What do they say? They go back in time. Right? You're stuck in a time warp. That's why we call it clockwork. I like it, Lauren. I said, what should I call it? She said, call it clockwork. I like that. I'm stuck in clockwork. Tell somebody at work tomorrow you're on clockwork. They're like, what's that, overtime? Yeah, it's going to be overtime, all right? <laughs> Come on. You're on clockwork. No, I'm serious. And what happens is watch. You start embracing it. Because you start learning, what are you learning? That this is the only way to get it done. And if you screw up the process, you'll never get the progress. You can't screw up the process. Let it happen. And rest back in the process and almost kick back and go, praise the Lord. I'm going to let it be. I'm going to let it be and let it work itself out. And as it's working itself out, I'm going to make a little bit of progress you might not see. Now watch this. Go to that scripture right here. I'm going to let you go. Okay? I'm going to let you go. Check this out, right? Go back to my second Kings. I can give, I can give you more, but we got two days. Is this all right? You all right with that? Because this is what I did. I came to drop it like this so you'll get it. Okay? Go to Second Kings 7. You right? Second Kings 7, start with verse 1. I want to show you this, okay? I started thinking about this. I started thinking about this. Because what you got to understand is that when we, when we put it out there like this, you got to reach out and embrace it. Okay? Okay, so I'm in it now. You got, I know I said it a lot, but I want to get it because that's why you're frustrated. That's why you get mad. That's why you get. That's why you want to quit. That's why you don't want to believe no more. That's why you want to settle on your destiny. Don't settle on your destiny. No, don't settle on your destiny. Be like, I don't like. The People make the biggest mistakes when they're stuck in the process. They make the biggest mistakes in life. They're stuck in the process. You want to know why? Because they just want to find. They want to get out of the pain. I, you, man, I'm preaching way better than this whole place is amen in me. It's the God's honest truth. See, you want to know why you don't like it? Because you don't like the pain. But the only way to get it is what? Yo, let me tell you. Let me give it to you real quick. Preacher 101. Okay? You want progress? Guess how it's coming? Through the pain avenue. And you know what it's going to be? Process. And if you don't like the process, you ain't going to like the pain. And the pain. I was reading that book. I brought that book for you. I'm reading this book on leadership pain. He had the best of the best. You name them. The best preachers in America. He said, it ain't the anointing, it ain't the call of God, it's not their special charismatic flow, it ain't, I said, man, this guy's got the best, 20,000, 40,000, 
member churches, the best of the best around the world. He said, I found out what the one common denominator there is with all of them that makes them great. I was like, man, let's bottle it up and sell it. Then I found out what it was. I said, I don't want it. He said, no. He said, it's the threshold of pain you can endure. Write that down in your notes. I said, what's the difference between all of them? He said, the threshold of pain you can endure. And we're trying to get out of pain, but I've got news for you. It's going to take pain to get you where you want to go. Woo, that will hurt, right? Everybody take a minute. Take a deep breath. You feel that? And we're trying to get away from the pain. Why? Why are you trying to get away from it? Because I don't like the process of it, man. It hurts. It's okay, though. Use it. Don't waste your pain. Turn around and set somebody else free with yours. <laughs> Wheel that joke around. Swip, smack the devil in the head with it. Say, you try to jack me up with it? Watch me go set somebody free. I stood bound for 20 years. Watch me set them free. I stood jacked up. Watch me unjack them up. I was down and out. Watch me lift them up. I was de- Come on, somebody. Turn your, don't waste your pain. Don't waste, but the, the devil made him, he should have killed us when he had a chance, but that joker missed his shot. Now I'm going to beat him up every day of my life. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Right? Should have killed you when he had the chance. Joker messed up. Should have took me out when you had a chance, bro. Couldn't do it. Now I'm going to go tell everybody how good God is. And now, so now, look, we got to go home. Look at this right here. And I got it. Got it. I'm going to tell you what. I almost held this. I almost held this. I almost held this word. Okay? But I let it loose because it's what I believe. There's an anointing here because I released it, and you need to hear this. And I'm going to tell you right now, spin the tape, give it to them. Give it to the church. I'm telling you, there's an anointing on this thing. I'm going to prove it to you because this is how I connected. And this is where I started this, 2 Kings 7-1. Okay, watch this. And Elijah said, hear the word of the Lord. Remember we started with this? Tomorrow about this time, you're going to see flour. It's going to be sold for dirt. And you're going to see barley, and it's going to be sold for cheap. Look right here. Go to the next verse. You were with me. Go to verse 2. Good job. And an officer of the king said, he basically doubted it. Remember? He said, man, come on. Look. He answered the man of God. The man of God gave a command. Gave a word, a prophetic word. He said, listen to the word of the Lord. He didn't even say listen to my word. He said, listen to the word of the Lord. What I tell you, when your word becomes God's word, you got you to help. Right? Come on. Watch. He said, look, if the Lord would make windows in heaven... How in the world could this be? He said, let me tell you what. I promise you it's going to come to pass, and you're going to see it with your eyes, but you're not going to partake of it because you're doubting it. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Never seen this. Look at verse 3. Now, there were four lepers at the entrance of the gate, and they said one to another, why do we sit here until we die? They've been sticking in time for a long time. They were stuck and didn't know it. Come on, they stuck. Man, I put something over here, it messed me up. I put something over here. Watch, okay, right? If we say we enter in the city and the famine is in the city, we're going to die. He said, and if we sit here, we're going to die. Now, we're going to die anyway. We look at it, right? You see four dudes, just, we, I can see me and you and Bishop having this conversation, Dave. We stay here, we're going to die. Doug. We go over there, Jer, we're going to die. We dying, bro. So I don't know about you, but I'm from New Jersey. Let's go out with a blaze. Let's make it a gunfight or something, man. If we're going to die, let's, let's at least get one or two before we go out. I don't know how to shoot a gun real good, but I'll give it a shot. I'm dying anyway, right? They said, forget it. He said, now look, if we come and surrender to the army of the Syrians, if they keep us alive and live, they're going to kill us. We're going to die. Ain't no way out. Just look at your neighbor and say, we're going to die. Anyway, you look at it, we're going to die, right? That is not a negative confession. They gonna, we're going to all go to heaven, but pray. They, these jokers going to die. Look at verse 5. You're going to love this. We're done. And they rose at twilight to go into camp of the Syrians. And when they had come to the outskirts of Syria, they kept to the surprise. There was no one there. You ready? Now, watch this. Keep reading. Go to the next verse. I'm done. I got to get you out of here. Okay? Okay? For the Lord had caused the armies of the Syrians to hear the noise of chariots and the noise of horses and the noise of a great army. So they said one another, look, the king of Israel is hired against us, kings of the Hittites and the kings of the Egyptians to attack us. 
four goofy lepers. You know what I put in my notes? The sound of the steps of a prophetic word. God amplified the sound of their steps. But I got a question. You know the story. They go on to seize the day and win the spoil and go back and be, be a tremendous blessing and live their life and not die and live with the spoil and defeat their enemy. I got a question. I got, I got a question that hit me. Why did they sit there stuck in time for so long? Wait, wait a minute. Watch this. What got them out of time? Look at verse 1. No, 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 no. Go to 2 Kings 1. And Elijah said, hear the word of the Lord. Let me tell you what happened. Elijah put a prophetic word in the atmosphere. And when the prophetic word hit the atmosphere, anybody that could hear, anybody that could, they picked it up. Anybody that could pick it up said, I got news. I say we give it a shot because I think our time's getting ready to shift. I think something's getting ready to accelerate in my life. I, now you got a big, you got to have an ear to hear. Why were those, they were sitting there for a long time. But guess what he did? A word came out. This is what I start thinking about. You know what I start thinking about? Jesus shows up in Luke chapter 4, right? And here he goes, right? He takes the book of Elijah, right? He opens it up. He said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me for he has anointed me to preach the gospel, to set captivity free, to heal the brokenhearted, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord, preach at liberty. And he closed the book. He said, this day is this scripture fulfilled in your ear. What did he say? The time has come now the time is now but he said what you better hear what i'm saying you got to hear what i'm saying anymore. but they said who is this dude he said you're going to miss it you're going to say a prophet is without honor in his own hometown hear what i'm saying don't critique where it's coming from hear what i'm saying and that's what he said he said what he said this day has this been fulfilled in your ear if you could bear witness with it why those lepers get up because there was a word in the atmosphere that set them up to get up and get out there was a word in the atmosphere that shifted everything that was going on there was a word in the atmosphere that could turn this thing around but i got news for you guess what you got to activate it you got to activate it you got to activate it i might be in listen to me i might be in the process but I understand it's only reason why it's here is to get to the progress. And instead of me getting mad about it, I'm going to embrace it. Because the only way to God to get it done is put it in this time thing. Here's the thing. You know what you're going to start doing? I'm done. You know what you're going to start doing? You're going to embrace the time. Because I'm not going to start looking at it like it's my enemy no more. Time is my process. And now what used to get you frustrated ain't going to get you frustrated no more if you heard what I said. You're going to go, okay, praise the Lord. I'm in process. I'm in the process. See, here's the thing. In the process, God's getting you ready. See, nobody likes it. But without it, you can't get there. You can play something. Without it, you ain't going to get there. And instead of embracing the place, you want to know why you don't embrace it? It's painful. You don't like it because it's painful. But here's the key. If you don't embrace the process, you ain't never going to see the progress. That sounds like a tongue twister all night long, but you better get it. That's why you wake up frustrated in the morning. What's God working on that I don't see? But here's the thing, man. If he's going here, you got to get this. If he's going to change something, he's got to put it in time. If he don't put it in time, it ain't going to change. So don't get nervous when you see it start happening. Don't, de don't, don't, de don't detach because it's painful. Embrace it. Embrace it, man. What am I saying embrace? Listen to me. I'm not saying embrace just the pain. Embrace the process. Because you ain't going to get through the pro You ain't going to progress without. I'm telling you, listen to me today. It's painful, man. It's painful. Anybody that tells you it ain't painful, they're lying. They're lying. But here's the thing. This should make you, it's liberating if you really hear what I'm saying. Oh, no wonder why I'm frustrated. I wonder why I don't see my promise. No matter, see, here's the thing. In the pain of seeing my promises, I can get lost in the process. And if I get lost in the process, I'll quit on it. Or I'll settle. Because I don't like the pain it's taking to get it. Oh, yeah, I don't like the pain it takes to get it. So what do I do? It, it hurt. It's hurting so bad sometimes. I'd rather do without it than have to stand in here and get it. 
Lord, tell the truth. Tell the truth. But here's the thing, guess what? I'm pushing through the pain threshold. Why? Because I know, look, man, let me tell you something. The process, the process that I got to go through, man, I'll tell you what, when that promise shows up, you'll forget about all the pain you had to go through. Come on, when the promise shows up, the joy shows up. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Amen. Come on, I know you ain't mad at me a little bit, but you ain't happy with me a little bit, but it's okay. Why? Because some of you are getting processed right now, and it seems uncomfortable, but it's going to be okay. Just hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Like, why don't I got goosebumps no more during worship? Process. Why don't I feel God? Process. Come on, you give me your question, I'll give you the answer. Why do I feel like I feel? Process. Why am I going through what I'm going through? Process. Why am I feel process? Process for this promise. Yeah. Why am I thinking this? Process. Why am I doing that? Process. Come on, man. You better stir yourself up and get in this thing, man. I know. Some of you is going to go right over your head. It's okay. Get the CD. Go listen to it a hundred times. I don't like the process. So you're gonna for, are you going to forfeit the progress? Because people will. It ain't worth it. I don't want it. Don't you quit. Don't you quit. You might be stuck in it, but don't you quit. You understand what I'm saying? Press in this thing. Push this thing. You can pull this thing into your life if you're ready. It's painful, though. You don't mind the pain. Look, I'm done. Don't, don't mind the pain. And do me a favor, please. Don't stop the process. See, because think about this. Look at what you've been through. I'm trying to get you to see this. And I know you will. Look at what you've been through. Look what you went through and look who you are right now because of what you went through. Can I get can I get it? Come on, can you see what I'm saying there? You understand what I just let me say that again real slow. Look at what used to, a year ago make you flip out, you don't even sweat no more. You been look, what you used to six months ago trip out about, you ain't tripping out about no more. Three years ago, would you ready to come on somebody? Why? I've been processed. You ain't safe till you've been processed. I can't trust you till you've been through some process. I don't know if you're going to trip out without process. you got to get to a place where you allow the process to get. But here's the thing. Why am I going through it? Because you got to check it out. Because that's the only way God gets it done. And you get trapped in this time warp until the fullness of time. But once time shows up, guess what? Come on, somebody. Come on. You know what I'm saying here. Come on, stand up on your feet. Come on. You know what I'm saying in here. Think about it. It's moving in you. Come on. Amen. You might be in here and say, you know what, man? I don't know. I'm not going to pray for everybody, but if you got pain, anybody got pain in your body? Anybody got pain in your body? Anybody got pain? You got pain in your body. Come down here. Everybody got pain in your body. Come down here. Come down here. Come down here. Come down here. You might be stuck in, stuck in this thing. Just line up straight. Just line up straight. What's going on, man? Really? Come on. All right, take one step up. Come on, everybody line up in a straight row. Like, boom, 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 boom. Go like right here. Single file. Bam. Perfect. As soon as you come down here, listen.